So John, vSAN encryption, should I choose a an external KMS or the vSphere native key provider? So this is something that's been fun because the capabilities um, have kind of been leapfrogging and catching up across the releases recently. So the native key provider, uh, vSAN encryption has been around for a while, but the native key provider uh, snuck out and, and with vSphere and vSAN 7 update 2. Um, previously, you had to use an external key provider, so you just didn't really have a choice. And these external key providers, um, they're, they're great, they're reliable. Um, there's a, an HCL that, you know, or a VCG that has an entry of lists of them, uh, but it was an added cost. It was an added complexity. It was one more thing that had to be managed externally. And some environments will still have them for compliance or operational process reasons. Um, and they're not, they're not going to go away. But the native key provider, it added a couple of things that were actually quite nice. So one of the capabilities is that it's bundled. And so you have the license for it. It's just kind of thrown in there with your vCenter server. And you can go with two clicks, you can set up some keys, you point your V, your, you can point your, when you're setting up a vSAN encryption, you point at those keys and you're good to go. Um, operationally, it's easy to back up. There's a manual backup process, so you can do a one-time backup. And then from then on, once you've run that once, um, the actually any backup of the vCenter itself will effectively back up the keys. Another thing that it opened up um, that at the time was not capable with the external KMS providers, was the ability to cache the keys on the host. So it will either cache the keys on the host uh, directly on the boot devices, or if you have TPMs, which I would strongly, strongly, strongly suggest everyone when you're buying new hosts, um, get TPMs, uh, the, the version two on your host. They're about $50, they're very cheap and they have other benefits. You can use some pro attestation and other things. Um, and what this allows you to do is securely cache the keys on the host. So if you ever get into a situation where you're having, let's say you've lost power to the data center, or it's at a remote site and you're bringing it up, or maybe it's a remote site and the vCenter is over the WAN, you can't reach the vCenter. Um, you're in a situation to where you can actually mount the encrypted vSAN data store and pull the keys out of the TPMs and the host. And so that way you can, you can recover from a cold boot scenario, including that fun chicken egg scenario where the vCenter that holds the keys is running on the cluster, it's encrypted. Previously, if you used external key providers, you could get in a situation where if you had um, mistakenly vMotioned your key providers all on top of the vSAN cluster and then lost power, you'd be in a situation where the host would be looking for the KMS to decrypt it, but they couldn't mount them because they weren't decrypted. And, you know, basically you could get into a permanent data unavailability. unavailability. That's basically impossible um, with the, using these TPMs or these cache boot device scenario, which is so operationally, there's a lot fewer kind of jagged edges to watch out for. Um, and it's a lot kind of, um, there's a much more fail safe design. Now, starting with vSAN 7 update 3, the external key providers actually now have the option. Uh, it's not by default, you will have to run some commands, but they have the option to leverage the TPM for this caching. So depending on your security and your operational stance, you still have both options. They're still great. Um, for just e default ease, safe of use, the native key provider is great, um, you know, and low cost. If you're looking for more advanced key management, if you want key managers to support uh, more than just vSphere, we're only providing keys for vSphere. We're not providing secrets for other, for other environments and things like that uh, today. So if you need that, you may still go buy external key providers. So mm -hmm. you've got options here. Yeah. And those options shouldn't, I think, you know, based off of what you've shared there, the options shouldn't be seen as this uh, point of confusion, but really opportunity in the sense that uh, you can have an existing environment, you have a KMS, then the question is, oh, should I change over to the vSphere native key provider? No, you're fine. You know, if that's serving your needs, hey, that's okay. But yet maybe you have another environment that you don't have a KMS avail uh, available for you. So, you know, and you're looking for that sort of uh, key management functionality, but you don't want to buy any additional KMS units for that maybe isolated environment. Sounds like that's where something like the native key provider would uh, serve a real purpose there. Yeah, those external key providers, it's really a one is none. You'd always have to have two of them. And I was often shocked sometimes talking to customers who, you know, it'd say, well, none of this, none of these 400 remote sites are encrypted because we didn't want to have to buy 800 key, you know, deploy 800 key providers out to these sites. Yeah. So this is actually enabling not just easier encryption necessarily, but encryption where logistically people just couldn't find a way to justify it. Um, or they would do, 
much more other difficult OS or application levels. So mm -hmm. a lot of options.